All right. Welcome, folks. My name is Henry. I wanted to give a brief introduction for how you go from a persistence barcode uh, to a persistence diagram. And you can also go backwards. So these are two representations of persistent homology that contain exactly the same information, just they're presented in a different format. All right, so let, let's jump right in. On the left, I have drawn a barcode for you. And on the right, I have drawn a diagram. Roughly speaking, these, these both represent holes in a growing space. So we might be tracking one dimensional holes or loops, right? And, and on the left here, this bar corresponds to a loop that was born at scale one and dies at scale nine. Whereas this bar represents a potentially a smaller loop that was born at scale five and dies at scale six. So let me show you how to take this persistence barcode and turn it into a diagram. So all you do is you take each bar and you turn that bar into a point in the plane. So this red bar on top, it was born at scale one and it dies at scale nine. So I plot this point here in the plane with X coordinate or birth coordinate one and with Y coordinate or death coordinate nine. And let's keep going. So next we have this bar that's born at scale two and dies at scale seven. So I put a point at two seven in the plane. And then I have a bar born at scale three that dies at scale 11. So I plot the point 311. And then I have a bar born at scale five that dies at scale 10. Only two more. Bar born at scale five that dies at scale six. And lastly, a bar born at scale six that dies at scale eight. All right, so you, you can see how these two representations contain exactly the same information. I've shown you how to go from the barcode to the diagram, but vice versa, you could try it out yourself. If I gave you a diagram, you could instead plot the bars corresponding to that diagram. So, uh, thanks very much. I'll actually take any questions from the audience if there are any. Wonderful. When do you, oh, oh, go ahead, Teresa. Um, when do you re recommend uh, taking the barcode and when the diagram? Are there certain situations where you would prefer one over the other? Sure, I'll say that, um, I mean, many people will have different answers here. You know, in, in applied topology, we often turn um, Know, turn persistent homology output into machine learning input these days. And a lot of the ways for doing that, such as persistence landscapes or persistence images are built on top of diagrams. So that's one common reason to use diagrams. Also, I think when you talk about the bottleneck distance or the Wasserstein distance between persistent homology, people often use diagrams to describe that. Although you can often use, you can describe that using barcodes. Personally, when I introduce homology, persistent homology to a complete um, uh, beginner, I, I start with barcodes, but that's just my personal preference and, and other people take the opposite approach there. Great question. And, and uh, I think that's a great question to ask anybody in applied topology and see what their reaction is. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd have a question. Is there any... Um any order that you want to give to the barcodes, the, like the vertical order, so to say, is that, does that play a role? Great question. And it, that really confuses people about the barcode representation. The vertical axis in some sense has no meaning. Okay, so if I, if I swapped the order of two bars, one on top of the other, you're not changing the barcode. So oftentimes bars are just ordered by birth time or death time. You can see here they're ordered by birth time, okay? But yeah, that's one confusing aspect of the barcode. The vertical axis, in some sense, has no meaning. Any last questions? Thanks so much.